so ominous. See, this is, this is Silent Hill 1. Love this. So I still have the radio. I think what I missed in 2 was I could definitely see a little bit farther. Because I think in 2 they had a little bit more of a darkness when you came out in Dark World. But what I loved about Silent Hill 1 was just that short draw distance. And that's something that obviously it gets a ton of praise for, how it turned. What was a weakness, no backing in of cars. It turned what was a weakness of not having a very good draw distance on the PS1. So they made this fog so they wouldn't have to actually draw very far. And then they gave you the radio because you couldn't actually react to any of the enemies. So do I not get a message on any of these or do I have to just leave? So they gave you the radio and it just made this perfect sense of like you just kind of had to like walk blindly throughout the entire world. And it just was so perfect and terrifying. And it felt like, I don't know how it, it's one of the few games that I felt was better because it had random encounters. Because that's essentially what it was, is you'd be running around town and you would have to deal with the enemies. Whereas, okay, that's just a light up there. And Silent Hill 2, I think by the end of it, it was pretty easy to dodge everything. And not dodge their attacks, but like they wouldn't see you at all. And that's not bad, because maybe I'm just like playing the game properly. But it definitely did uh, take away some of the challenge for me. So do I have a map? I do, and this is definitely Silent Hill. All right. Hill Historical Society. This looks a lot like Silent Hill 2. I guess I haven't played one in a long time. So, but this is definitely 2's Silent Hill. And I knew they're not canon, but I thought one of the reasons it was known that they weren't canon, oh yeah, that's very Silent Hill 1, was the fact that the town itself was different. That there were like structures there that weren't there in the first game. So, I'm just kind of exploring here. I would actually love to see if this was the same town. I mean, other than the story, of course it is. Is what was different in everything. So, 106. So, I'm actually playing this after my uh, Dallas Fort Worth trip. So, it's been a little bit of a while. Okay, so that's just pointing me back to... No, that's... Okay, I'm supposed to go to the hospital. Jack's Inn. That's the... Uh, that's the inn. Let's go ahead and hit run towards these enemies. I'm also trying a uh, new audio setup now that I'm back from Dallas-Fort Worth. And hopefully, hopefully, this should actually get rid of some of the audio issues. Or at least give me two options to choose from. For whichever one is worse off. So this is actually something I didn't think of, but I wonder if, like, walking in the grass is actually softer or louder. I'm guessing it's probably actually softer. I wish there was a good way to, like, Kind of tell you that stuff in game without it being too unimmersive. Immersion breaking, something like that. This is a really weird way to pick it from, but uh, I actually really love Metro Last Light or just any of the Metro games because your character just had a watch. Oh god, it's that thing. So yeah, they just fly through. But it was just a watch that it was like canon just to be like a, a light sensor to see how lit up you are. Let me take a left here. But it worked as letting you see basically how uh, stealthy you're being without really breaking the game immersion. Like it wasn't uh, in Oblivion or uh, Skyrim where you get a giant eye that just knows when the enemy see you. That's a dog. Some dodging here. I think I talked about this in every game I play for the channel. Is once I beat it, I just can't wait to go see a speedrun and all the stuff I missed. Because I know I'm missing things. Like, I haven't yet looked too much into it, but I know I'm going to go back. And it's like, oh, if you had just turned around in this one section, it would have, you would have noticed that there was an RPG here or something. Or just because, like, this game doesn't do... That's new. That's a new sound. Squishy. Is so my back to having stamina again? It's like she can run forever, and I don't know if it's just like a... A fast run versus a slow run. See, this just looks so similar because I thought all this graffiti was from the girl in two. The, uh, like the really young girl that knew your wife, and that's why it was here. But it almost looks like so exact. It's creepy. But I've been looking forward to get back to this game just because I left it at such a perfect little halfway point where it finally felt like the game started. And even now, just being like, go. Like, you're in the town. Now, it makes him want to be like, ooh, it's going to matter. Like, I'm finally reaching 
the game that I assume people would actually talk about. I really don't know what that first third was. I'm guessing it's a third of the game. Just based off length, but... I don't know. It just seemed like so weirdly long. Oh, god damn. You're coming up, like, right away, aren't you? Interesting. It's even, like, right back. This, these are Silent Hill, like, 1 nurses. Except I think the Silent Hill 1 ones, at least in the, uh, other world, had those giant lumps in their back. Whereas the Silent Hill 2 ones were, like, more bandage and just, uh, twitchy. There must have been, a, been kids here, too, then. I played with dolls like this when I was a child, too. It really takes me back. Can I read this? There we go. All the Silent Hill games have huge issues with that, letting you interact with the object you mean to. This day has finally come. That's right, the day when you and I will meet. I was always thinking of you here in this gloomy cell. I never even knew your name or face until today. But now I know. I know you're the one I, I've been waiting for. I'm trying to like, not read ahead in the background because I believe that's actually written out. And haven't you been waiting for me too? That's why you came to rescue me. Oh, how I love you, Heather. I want to give you my prized doll I made to commemorate our meeting, the start of this everlasting love. Ah, I can already see your smiling face. Stanley Coleman. I feel like I know that name for some reason. But it's, it's not the name I expected. I thought it was going to be something like a, from the girl on the beginning of one. Ooh, there's a camera. Can I? I don't think I can interact with stuff up there. What's it watching? Was this who... Is this like an interview room? Because it's still a hospital. For for a second, it I thought this must be like a uh, police station interview room, but so that's all that's in here. I got lag when you get hit. There we go. We're gonna play this fun game of dodging all these nurses until we find a save point. There we go. Advance a little creepy. And I'm hoping I'm probably gonna st actually stick around the uh, center of this hospital just because I really need to get that map. And I'm gonna be observant this time. I'm gonna be so observant. Anytime there's like papers. Oh, come on. We got. You're looking at something. I, I can see it. Interesting. Okay, there we go. Yep, there's the map. See, I'm looking for. I can see that. I know it's probably going to be here, but that camera was really fighting me. So, like, you would admit, totally miss this if it wasn't obvious that she was looking at it. All right. Got a hospital map. So, I'm going to talk while I do this, but man, I finally started editing these because they've started coming out. There's nothing interesting on the shelf or scattered on the floor. And man, got a health drink. <laughs> Back in the sewers. I just see myself comment, like, that's weird, she's looking at that paper on the wall. Like, something, like, super obvious, and then it didn't occur to me until way later. It's like, that was the map. That's why. Man, this even has the same layout. Or it's, like, not ex... I don't think it's the exact same layout as two. But if not, it's... Super exact. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe two is canon. I just thought it was different. Or maybe it's something weird like stories canon, but that particular, uh, I don't know, Mad World, the other world, isn't. This is a different room, right? Like, it's not like the doll's gone. This was a different room. But there's like that one spot of red, like where the doll was. Okay, I might need a heal. Visiting room. No, this is the same room. Okay. So the doll's gone. Why would that matter? Man, I really got turned around. <laughs> the uh, map and the save were literally straight ahead if I had just gone straight there. So, let's see. Oh, actually, you know what I just heard me? I had complained about... Whoa, that shadow. It's creepy. I complained about why they have doors in all these rooms that don't go anywhere. And I guess now it just occurs to me because... 
they have to have this for multiple games. So yeah, they might not use this room here, but that might have been a room in two. And the ambience in this is like super good. I thought that was funny. There's definitely kind of a rhythm where it's like every fourth door or so you try is generally unlocked. So you kind of start to know when there's going to be one that's uh, changed. She's sliding to the right. There's a memo posted on the refrigerator. She gonna stop? Food only, do not store drugs. I wonder if it's okay to store health drinks in here. Oh, okay. I thought there was gonna be something there like, why do I need a store? Am I gonna am I gonna lose all my items? And then you only have what you have stored in there? But I guess it was just a joke. Like, oh haha, like what is this? Is that a food or is that a drug? Like we don't really know what the food the uh, health drinks are. Let's see. What you got? A letter? It's a medical record or something for this Leonard guy. Could this be the same Leonard that Vincent was talking about? Room S12. Presenting mild audiovisual hallucinations. Emotional instability. Obsessive ideas. Suspect mild schizophrenia. Will continue observation. Basically calm and cooperative with a strong sense of justice. However, according to reports, becomes very violent when overexcited. The other one is for Stanley Coleman. This is the guy who wrote that sick diary. Room SO7. Usually passive and cowardly, also egotistical. Sometimes shows and acts on obsessive attachment to a particular woman. This has caused violent incidents. Use caution. Is he going to be the boss? I like to think I can usually predict horror game stuff, but I will say Silent Hill usually like, uh, gets me. Like, I don't predict it. But then on the other hand, sometimes it's because it's worse than I expected. Like, not scary or just boring. There's stuff written on the whiteboard, but none of it really matters to me. And you're just looking towards the notes? Yeah. Okay. So, I believe that's all taken. Interesting, she doesn't look forward or at, I at items when I turn off the flashlight. I bet I can't interact with items either. Okay. So if I want to metagame this, I'm pretty sure the cafeteria, kitchen, and day room are going to be locked off. and Because I know I have to go deeper into the hospital. That's how that works. But just for the sake of the game, I'm going to try kitchen. If I go near the elevator, I might look it out. But the elevator is always broken. I'm just looking at the monster, right? Yeah, see, look at this. This is just a bad all, yeah, bad all around idea. Luckily, I can push them pretty much indiscriminately, as long as I'm rushing. So that's good. Prove me wrong. Hmm. It's a big elevator. I guess they have to get like a gurney in here. YOLO. Going to the basement first in the Silent Hill game. I'm actually, I was really hoping the elevator was not going to be active. Oh, so this is super otherworldly. Oh, I can't see anything. Just because the worst and scariest Silent Hill dungeons, again, I call them dungeons, are the ones that are uh, have a lot of parallel paths. Like, it's one thing when it's linear, because you can kind of plan stuff, but uh, when it just branches off, that's how you do stuff like miss the map or just like die a lot. So it looks like this hallway is safer to go down. So let's section this off and something, unless something bursts out. Do I hear breathing? No. So are these locks, do they get like rusted or are they actually like uh, being broken by something? There's something on the table. So I, there's nothing to my right. I had a thought that I think the way, oh, of course, the way Silent Hill works on after this, disgusting, I won't touch that with a 10 foot pole. I'll discuss it in a second here. You may not have yet realized your own true feelings, but you sense them unconsciously. And so you're trying to get closer to me. That's a virtue, the path to paradise. Again, paradise got referenced just like in the uh, lock, the uh, office building. If the door's locked, open it. 
use the password for the prison gates. Doctor, I forgot his name. Anyway, that quack has it posted. He should be here too. I mean, four numbers would have been good enough, but he kept on going. Isn't it a shame? I'm not there. Aren't you irritated? I long for you, but you're so cruel. Still, I want you, Heather. Stanley Coleman. Okay. Oh, I think Silent Hill is... Let me take a health drink while I talk here. Is basically... Was it Claudia? I think has the power to kind of unleash this other world. And I don't think it can actually kill Heather. But what I think kind of happens is you're just stuck in this purgatory of dying where like the only path is forward you can only go towards what she wants you to do otherwise you get trapped by these doors or killed by the monsters and then i think nope you actually do resurrect but it's not like a actual like resurrection you didn't actually die you just kind of blacked out and came back to it dad wrote about my past in here as always <laughs> this should be novelized so is this just saying did I actually read this? I hope this will never come to any use. Maybe it's better if you never know. More than anything else, I fear the possibility of your going away far from me. But sometimes we have to tell the truth. That's why I'm writing this before I'm lost in death and oblivion. What happened back then? That has something to do with who you are. It all started 24 years ago. So Heather's 24? I guess not. I don't know if the baby was literally born then or if it was like a year old or something. Coming back from a vacation, my wife and I found a baby on the side of the highway. Since we were childless, we thanked God for letting us meet this child, this girl. We took her home. That's not what happened, though, right? His wife wasn't there. Three years later, my wife died. Oh, yeah. No, okay, yeah, that's way before the beginning. It's not that baby. Three years later, my wife died, and another four years later, 17 years ago, I came to Scion Hill. I heard the girl's pleas and took her with me, not knowing why she wanted to go there. And it was there that the girl went away. Not that she actually went anywhere, nor did she die. Quote unquote, return to her original self. That's what Dali Gillespie said. Original self. That was the young woman burned by her mother as a sacrifice to God, Alessa Gillespie. Half her soul escaped in those flames and went on to live in a baby, in that girl of mine, of ours. Seven years passed before that half a girl returned to Silent Hill and made Alessa whole again. Newly strengthened, she vowed to kill God. God, a fetus nestled into the sacrificial girl's womb, was summoned with the, uh, with the usual rites. This was Alessa's wish, no matter what the outcome, even if her own existence were at stake. But that wish was not granted. My interruption meant she prayed instead for the girl's return. I alone couldn't bring her back. Dahlia did it. I only helped at the birthing ceremony to bring God out of Alessa. The newly born God wailed once and was dead, all from that girl's, and probably Alessa's, conscious resistance. That's not the end. After God had vanished in a glow of light, Alessa reappeared and gave me a baby. She looked a lot like that girl so long ago. And then Alessa was gone, dead. There was nothing I could have done to help. I simply clutched the baby to my chest and ran off. The whole thing felt like a dream, but I had proof that it wasn't. The girl was nowhere to be found in my arms, the baby. Now 17 years have passed. It feels like only yesterday, and again, it feels like a million years ago. I confess I had reservations at first about raising that baby. Could I love her? Her existence was thoroughly unexplainable. I thought she could be that young woman who snatched away my beloved daughter. That led to sadness, anger. There were times when I put my hands around her tiny little throat. Several times I even considered abandoning her. That's what a terrible person I am. But I decided to raise her after all. I just couldn't seem to let her go when she, when you look at me, when you laugh. So even now, I can't forget about that girl. But I love you. I have no doubts about that. That's all I ask you to believe. To my precious daughter, Harry Mason. Wow. It was like so somber. I picked a good room to read that in, I guess. 